everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Mendiola, and I am the GIS liaison for the Environmental Sciences Department, abbreviated into ESD. ESD provides research, data gathering, scientific assessment, and environmental conditions uh, for the San Antonio River Basin. Uh, they do a variety of things, but I wanted to note that in ESD there is the Regional Environmental Laboratory, which is a TCEQ accredited laboratory where they conduct analysis of surface water samples. And later on, I will be showing you the data from those water samples in the Water Quality Data Viewer. My name is Philip Brown. I work primarily in uh, GIS infrastructure, which specifically means connecting all the computers together to uh, maintain our infrastructure of GIS data. I also work with the utility team and the real estate team, these two areas. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Carhart and I am a GIS analyst and I primarily serve our watershed engineering department, which is actually split up into a more ecological side and a construction based side, um, but both deal heavily with flood risk met mitigation, including um, dams, um, floodways, floodplains, um, various construction of channels, things of that nature, as well as uh, regional water planning and development. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Garcia, and I am the real estate liaison for the GIS team. I do primarily work for our real estate department, our watershed parks operations department, like park reservations, and then as well as our utilities department. Hi, my name is Rebecca Segura, and I'm a GIS analyst at the River Authority. I help support real estate and the utilities departments. However, my main focus is the sustainability infrastructure unit where we try to implement low impact development, which helps slow the runoff from after a major stormwater event. And these lid features spread it out and allow it, allow the water to soak in. Welcome to the San Antonio River Authority's public facing website. You can see the URL up here and please visit it if you can. We are the GIS team. We are a five member team uh, that works exclusively for the River Authority. I want to go over some of the details about the River Authority, then we'll talk more about GIS at the River Authority. The River Authority is responsible for four counties. We call Wilson, Carnes, and Goliad downstream counties as the San Antonio River flows to the Gulf of Mexico. Our vision is inspiring action for healthy creeks and rivers, and our mission is committed to safe, clean, and enjoyable creeks and rivers. So safe, clean and enjoyable. At the River Authority, we are engaged in a tremendous number of public services that range anywhere from debris removal, real estate development resources, environmental investigation, environmental sciences, flood risk mitigation, and of course, GIS data requests, laboratory services, low impact development, parks, real estate, regional water planning, and we do operate utility wastewater treatment plants. We maintain and host many different public viewing interactive viewers. These are all GIS applications, and these are some of the most common 
public facing GIS applications. And you can see that they cover a broad range of disciplines. Another one of our public facing is for engineering only. And this is a standard application hosted on Esri's ArcGIS.com. And these are the layers that are on and you can simply control what layers pop up and close down just by clicking. This app is hosted on our Esri ArcGIS Online application portal. This is our opening page and we will go into some the galleries of some of our other enterprise applications. These are both public facing and private applications. And as you can see, we maintain and host quite a few. I'm now going to go to our local portal implementation of ArcGIS. And this is our local portal that is not public and we do work on it at the same time. This is a map that I've made fresh just to show you. So this is a map produced on portal. I can turn on different layers and this is an aerial image layer that allows me to zoom in as quick as possible. And you'll see a image layer start up. Bingo, that image layer just turned on and this is a high resolution image layer that we can add to any map that allows us to zoom in and see a lot of detail. Last year, the GIS team was approached by our Watershed Parks and Operations Department with a request to count all the stems that exist on the Mission Reach with a height of six feet or taller. Since excess thick vegetation can slow down the flow of flood water, this was requested to ensure that the River Authority was staying within the floodway regulations set by the Army Corps of Engineers. Using high resolution imagery that Philip just showed and two different software programs, including Global Mapper and FME, which we'll get into in a little bit, we were able to get an estimate of stems that exist within, the spe within that specific area and field staff from WPO ground truthed the points. So right here, these green dots are the um, stem counts that we were able to collect using the high resolution imagery. And our WPO department broke up sections of the mission reach into um, smaller bite-sized areas where they could easily go through the, the mission reach and ground truth the points to ensure that where each green point is, there was actually a stem there. So it was basically, a test to ensure the accuracy of the data set and make any corrections if necessary. Once the stem point data set was completed, it was sent off to our watershed engineers to process within their floodplain models. The output from the models let them know how many stems would need to be removed from each planting zone along the mission reach. So they were able to take this data set right here where you can kind of see the, the hatch marks and they took the difference field and it was turned into a separate data set with these red lines and boundaries and um, this number right here seven eight six thirteen those all represent the number of stems that are the actual zone of stems allowed in that specific polygon so those are technically stems that would need to be removed to ensure that the river authority is meeting the regulations set by the Army Corps of Engineers. Then the GIS team created a web map, which you are viewing right now, to better, better visualize and share this data within the organization. What started off as one data set turned into a collection of data to show the number of stems that currently exist along the mission reach, as well as a plan of action for specific areas that require tree removal. And another important component of this study was ensuring that we were respecting um, avian study boundaries. You can see here that line that is being added and removed from the map. Um, that is an avian study boundary because with tree removals, you have to ensure that you are respecting native wildlife and habitats. 
And um, that is definitely a concern along the mission reach. So that was another uh, factor of this study that came into play. This study will be repeated at least on an annual basis, um, but definitely every two or three years to ensure that we are protecting uh, neighboring uh, neighborhoods and structures along the San Antonio River. Survey 123 is an application that allows you to access it through the computer as well as your phone. This allows us to work outside of the office and it makes it a lot easier to create and share information. This specific Survey 123 was created for our River Clicks photo contest, which we do every single year. It allows us to interact with the public to gather photos. What someone would do would they would bring their photo into this website embedded within our main website, throw their information in, they can put their location as well as input their images. And once they click submit for their image, we are able to see all their information. This is what the Survey123 website would look like on our end. It allows us to see where each individual took their photo and so we can see their individual photo. We have the information and then we can see their image. Let me take a picture of this thing. And that's gonna be Survey123. It's a great way to interact within the office and outside of the office. Another application is a story map, and it's that's what it is. It tells a story. Within this specific story map that we created, it talks about a river restored, talks about how our habitats and our bird species can be affected by restoring the river. And we have a quick background of our Mission Reach Avian study. You can embed many photos, many links, videos, and then different tabs. We also talk about our bird species that we have within our central area, more links, habitats, and then you can also take a tour on our story map. This allows you to go through the different areas of the river to see what is where and it takes you straight through the map, as you can see here on the right. If you're curious and knowing more, feel free to take a look at our website. We have more information there. And those are story maps. This is the San Antonio River Authority's Risk Map Viewer. The Risk Map Viewer stands for Risk Mapping, Assessment, and Planning, and it provides communities with updated flood hazard information and risk assessment tools that they can use to enhance their mitigation plans to better protect their citizens. This viewer was produced in coordination with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or more commonly known as FEMA. The River Authority is a FEMA delegate, which means that our watershed engineers have the right or obligation to act on behalf of FEMA. So this is why we produce this map. We are a FEMA delegate and we are responsible for disseminating this information to residents um, and constituents within the San Antonio River watershed, which you can see right here. It is uh, the Medina watershed, Upper San Antonio, Lower San Antonio and Cibolo. So on this side of the viewer, we have some information about FEMA and the risk map viewer. You can also see how to navigate the viewer as well. And it also gives you a breakdown of what each of these layers represent. Although there's only four GIS data sets included on this viewer, it provides a significant insight and tells a story about current and projected flood risk within each watershed. You can navigate the layers right here. And as we zoom in, you can actually see them become more visible um, as we zoom in. 
So here we have the flood depth, which is the 1% annual chance of flooding um, that could occur within a year. This is commonly referred to as the 100 year floodplain. And if you click on it, you can actually see the flood depth uh, for that specific area. So the flood depth for right here would be 14 feet. If we turn on the 30 year risk of flooding layer, you can actually see the 30-year uh, risk of flooding. And this is basically a term that um, describes the risk of flooding over the life of a 30-year mortgage. And it's projected as a percent chance, just like a rain forecast. So you would um, basically use the colors here that you can also see in the legend, and that will show you your percent chance of flooding within a 30-year mortgage. And these are also um, the symbology for the, uh, the flood depth grids as well. So this is really, really helpful. Say if you're in this neighborhood, you own a property um, over here and you wanna see, should I buy flood insurance? The answer is probably yes, because if you are living right along a creek or a river um, and you are at a 93.8 to 104.8 percent chance that you would flood during your mortgage, that would be a high risk. And um, this is primarily what this viewer is used for, for constituents to be able to see um, their flood risk and um, whether or not they need to take any precautions um, to avoid that. And you can go through and see what the floodplain looks like. And um, it can be pretty cool. So that is our uh, risk map viewer. Feel free to play around with it. And it is included on our uh, our website. Hey everyone, Sarah here. I am going to show you our water quality viewer. The River Authority wanted to make our water quality sampling data and other relevant information more transparent to the public. So we created this water quality viewer it is an interactive tabbed application that allows the user to explore and download data. So on this first tab, water quality, you will see um, an embedded window to our Power BI dashboard. And it's fun and interactive. Simply click on a station and all of the widgets on the sides will react. So I clicked on this one here and as you can see, it is in the Leon Creek watershed in Bear County. And we can see the segment ID along with some station information. So click this green button down here to go to more station information. And you'll be able to see some of the parameters and more details regarding the station. So here we'll have how much, meaning how much bacteria is at the station and it will have this thermometer that indicates the levels that are acceptable according to the primary, secondary recreation standards. And these standards are set by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, who we work very closely with. And unfortunately, there's no photos at this station, but there usually are, so it's fun. Um, these other tabs in this bacteria dashboard indicate other parameters regarding the station. So we have aquatic community, nutrients, as well as suspended and dissolved solids. I want to pull your attention to this bottom bar here as well. Um, if you click download data, you'll be able to download all the information related to the station. <clears throat> all right. Moving on to the other tabs, here we have primary contact recreation use. This is a use designation created by TCEQ. And these are more related to the stream segments as in comparison to the stations. And we have them color coded to represent the impairments. So here at the bottom, I'm gonna click the legend to show you what those colors mean. So green is not impaired. This yellow orangey color is concerned. And then we have impaired. Um, we're looking at the San Antonio River Basin here. So as you can tell, we have a lot of colors, a lot of different types of um, uses and designations. 
In the other tabs, we have aquatic life use. It will show the same thing. General use. It'll show the same thing. And of course, all of these are just different types of use designations. And the name in itself kind of indicates what it reflects. So for fish consumption, we're talking about fish population and general use is like, you know, recreation use. Aquatic life will be the environmental conditions and then primary contact recreation use will be um, exactly that. Can you recreate in these streams based off the impairment to designation? And that's it, have fun. Hi, at the San Antonio River Authority, we have our bacteria dashboard. The San Antonio River Authority created the dashboard to display multiple visualizations of the most current monitoring station information located within the San Antonio River Basin. The key piece of information featured in this dashboard is the geometric mean, or also known as the geomean, which is determined for each monitoring station using E. coli results for all routine samples collected during the last five years. For determining the suitable recreation use, we measure E. coli bacteria as an indicator of recent fecal contamination to our streams. When it rains, E. coli levels in our rivers and streams rise exponentially. This is because as it rains, storm water runoff washes over the watershed, carrying fecal matter into our streams. The River Authority uses GeoMean to determine the type of contact recreation <clears throat> at each given location. The River Authority currently reports three standards, which you can find over here on the right. At the bottom, we have a graph giving you a view of the E. coli values for the stations in the map. You're also able to interact with this map. You can zoom in and out, and then on the right, you can see that the station numbers change. You are able to click on a station and view the information for that particular station. At the River Authority, we utilize FME, which stands for Feature Manipulation Engine. This software is a powerful ETL tool, meaning you can extract, transform, and load data into several different types of formats. FME is used to automatically update our dashboard on a monthly basis. Here is FME. With FME, you read in your data and it's like you're reading a sentence. You read from left to right. So you read in your data on the left, you transform your data in the middle, and then you write out your data on the right. This process includes reading an SQL database that captures the new GeoMean readings from each monitoring station, as well as reads the data in the dashboard. The data is then compared to each other and FME detects changes of the data over the past month. Once the data is updated in AGOL, an email is sent to our environmental science department managers notifying them that changes were made to the bacteria dashboard and an Excel sheet of the changes is attached to the email. FME has allowed us to manipulate and convert data automatically. In turn, this eliminates any room for errors and ensures the integrity of our data.